How is this possible? How are we already at the end of warm. season four? Yes. I cannot believe it. It's supposed to get kind of chilly next week. That sounds nice. <laughs> I like the cold. I see we're all visiting mom now. Well, Shoto has been sending me letters. He said the extra training for the provisional license is tough, but he's working hard to catch up to his friends. He is working hard. He's working so hard he's not even in the show. <laughs> he's just sort of like sleeping. He's officially number one now. Natsu. The world doesn't know what he did to you or to us. Right. How terribly he treated his family. Right. What is that like seeing him in the spotlight all the time? He wants to leave the past behind and forget about his family. I don't think I mean, that's who true. knows? Who really knows? It's tough to say that for sure. He knows they're my favorite. Wait, Dad's been here? Of course, I haven't seen him. I'm still afraid. Probably for the best, yeah. Makes sense. I have no idea what he's feeling or how his mind works. Yeah, I, the external who knows? Pressures that must be on him. That is clear. External pressures are there. He's this is real tough. Trying to face his past. This is such a good setup for this fight. <laughs> it's such a perfect intro to this episode, knowing what's coming. Yeah, and roll, roll credit, roll intro. Oh yeah, it's the last time! Oh no, I've like fallen in love with this intro. This school festival, there was everything that I ever wanted in Slice of Life. Yeah, this means a lot more knowing the conflict she was experiencing. Did she write the song? Was that ever covered? Maybe I just totally missed that. I feel like that's implied by the intro, no? Am I crazy? Love it, love it! It was better than I ever could have anticipated. So you guys always come through with like the best trivia, like the absolute best trivia. And I could be getting this wrong because I'm not the best with details. That... Oh, look at that! It didn't mean anything to me until right now, but that's, uh, that's Hawks. Yeah, I was told that he bought this sweater for Aerie and the nurses thought it was, it was too ugly. Which is a damn shame! He's not a man to make those gestures, so for him to get his heartfelt gesture made fun of or teased, it just cuts right to the bone. It's cute, no? Even if it is ugly, who cares? It's, it's not like Aerie's gotten a lot of gifts in her life. Let her get the damn sweater, evil nurses. Who are the real villains on the show? <laughs> Oh yeah, I should probably talk about Endeavor. <laughs> Who knows what the hell he's going through? I think he's outwardly callous, but I really don't think he's unfeeling. In fact, I think he's a mess of emotions, if I had to guess. He's gotta be riddled with guilt, which is tough because you don't wanna say that makes it all right. You know, like he feels bad about it, so therefore he's fine. But it's sort of a difficult question. Like, I know what it feels like to do really terrible things and then just have to live with that. I can sort of acknowledge both simultaneously, right? That he did horrible things and that there's no forgiveness for those things, but that he deserves another chance, if that makes sense. If the options are the past being what it was and then continued suffering, or the past being what it was and Endeavor actually is able to do some good, then I'm going to choose the, the latter. You can never unwrite the worst chapters of your life, but you can keep them there as inspiration to do things that you, you may never have been able to do otherwise. Anyway, on to what I'm sure will be an epic Endeavor battle. It's always epic when Endeavor's fighting. I mean, this thing is definitely fine. This one is fine. completely unlike any other I've faced because it can talk. Show me right. strength. I'm wondering if that makes it more intelligent or means it's more intelligent. Hell Spider! <laughs> His moves are so cool. Oh damn. This thing is giving me um carnage vibes. Come on. Get yourself together now. What are you doing? <laughs> Oh, damn, what was that? That was awesome. How is this thing faster and stronger than me? How is that building standing? Oh, it's not standing. That's the work for other heroes. Yeah, like, like Hawks. Sense them fierce wings. That explains a lot. That makes his power a lot more um, powerful. He has like sentient feathers. He has tough yet supple feathers. Each and every <laughs> one of them is under his control. But also somewhat autonomous? Like you give them commands. All evacuated safely. That was amazing. Hell Spider! This is also exciting just for like, when Todoroki actually starts to master fire. There's just so much upward potential for all the characters and their powers still. I said burn. <laughs> Holy crap. I also love this, this duo, this tag team duo. Sort of a perfect pairing. More of them. They're not the same color though. These are the grunts. inside its body. Can you make them? I'm starting to overheat. Overheat, there's a weakness. It's using pawns to keep my backup occupied. Right. This Nomu is thinking. Yeah, yeah, it is intelligent. Or more intelligent, at least. It's strategizing. And Hawks is pretty damn awesome. There's a lot he can do with these wings. Feathers. Although, to be frank... Is that a feather sword? <laughs> Overheating has always been a problem. Very clear metaphor there. The reason for my actions. Look at that! Endeavor is still in the sky! Shining brightly! I can feel the heat from his attacks! He's a one-man inferno! Thanks for the glow-up, reporter. 
I, I mean, he does look amazing. He looks so cool right now. God, it's also such a great contrast to go from what we've seen of Endeavor recently of just him being this bumbling mess in public, embarrassing himself at every turn and embarrassing his son at every turn and actually turning out to be this weird, awkward man-child to this epic battle where he just looks awesome and literally is a fire god. I feel like this is something that Shonen gets right. It just ends up being the case, I think, that one of the ways to be heroic is just to be really capable and be really dependable. Talking about the billboard rankings, it was like number of people saved, contribution to society, and popularity, right? And Endeavor manages to be the number one hero, despite obviously not being a people person. And I think the reason for that is just that he shows up and does what he has to do and is like the man doing it. And interestingly, I feel like this was the subject of some debate when we got that autograph backstory on the, the guy from the other school who hates Endeavor. Because at that time I said, I think the most important thing is just Endeavor showing up and handling his business and that the personality stuff is sort of less important to me. I feel like that's borne out in this show, especially with Endeavor. And I feel like that's correct. I feel like a lot gets forgiven. A lot gets forgiven about niceties and your politeness and your demeanor. If you're someone people can rely on, if you're someone that people trust to do things that will help them or save them or whatever, you know what I mean? Which doesn't mean Endeavor doesn't have a lot of room to grow, but I feel like his room to grow is not necessarily his demeanor, it's more like his values and his heart and his intentions, if that makes sense. I'll incinerate you with hellfire so hot, you won't be able to regenerate fast enough! Providence! I mean, really put a lot into this episode, animation-wise, fight-wise. So instead, and just backstory. watch what I do. <laughs> Flashback. Right, right, right. I can't be allowed to look pathetic. It's such a critical moment, yeah. Not enough. He's got that, that cell power. Where are you gonna draw from Endeavor? Oh my god! Oh! Was that a headshot? No, what just happened? On there. Any stronger heroes oh my around. god, he, well, he's fine. This is the best genius situation. He's gonna disappear for a season and come back. This is a fake out. I'm talking about his arc and his chance for redemption and that's the way it's gonna happen. Heroes are currently attempting to suppress them and evacuate citizens. There's one that you need to deal with more than others. Still kicking, there you go. That's a huge relief. Good I mean, I feel like this is something Endeavor is already telling himself every day. Our father never gives up. Just look at him. He's probably the most stubborn man in the world. Fair. <laughs> is this what we wanted? Is this the heroic society we dreamed of? Where mommies abandon their children? I mean, I feel like a pretty thin line between <laughs> faith in society and outright panic and complete abandonment of anything resembling <laughs> strength. This is a problem. This is the problem with the All Might model. People are just a little bit too willing or too quick to abdicate their personal responsibility outwards. Don't say there's no symbol just because All Might's not here. You're losing it, man. We need to run. It's not wrong. Endeavor's risking his life for us. Man, what's it like for Todoroki watching this right now? So you regenerate too, hero. You are the same as me. Um, <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm thankful for the pain. It's keeping me conscious. Oof. I have to keep my eye fixed on the slim chance of victory. I, literally. Even harder! Bestine is not the only one who can make great quirk-related puns. He's got backup. That's it, Endeavor. And I like how he realizes how much this means. You never stop trying to take his spot. Interesting, it's like Hawks is a fan of Endeavor. Let me help you. I can Beautiful. add my speed to your firepower. With that, you'll have one final push. This relationship ends up being a lot deeper than I than I thought. Hawks is really emotionally invested in this. And this. <laughs> Listen to me. No move. Is this what is he doing? Is this self-sacrifice? Even as he suffers and struggles, he's fighting. Elvis is very on the nose reporter commentary. Higher into the sky. I won't have to worry about collateral damage. Oh no. Uh, uh what is he gonna do? You are me from the past or another future. Whoa. Burn up. Be at rest. Oh my god. I was talking about like him exercising demons through the fight. I'll go plus ultra! <laughs> I mean, if anyone ever went plus ultra, this is it. Holy crap. 
But is he? But is he? Oh, oh, oh! I, I saw an intact endeavor. Oh my God! The legend, the legend he would be if he walked out of the flames. Yes! <laughs> Hell yeah! Oh my God! He really, he did a lot. He did a lot more than just beat that Nomo. He just earned earned his spot. A symbol of a new beginning. We must keep fighting. We are the ones who must carry his symbol now. How does Bakugo feel about this? Bakugo's facial impressions, uh, facial expressions are always so poignant. <gasps> no, he can't leave me hanging there. Come on. That was so much fun. That just flew by. I just like it on so many levels. I mean, first of all, I really respect the fact that they just built Endeavor as such a terrible, terrible creature from, from the beginning. His character is just tainted because of what we know about him and his past and his family. I mean, he crossed a lot of sacred lines, which makes it tricky, right? Because I think it's kind of tough for us to have that sort of nuanced and layered view of people. We're sort of geared to be more binary, you know, like this person is just a bad person or this person is a good person for that matter. The past is really important as like an indicator of evaluating people and whether or not to trust them and what to expect from them. But I don't think it should be a death sentence. Like I want to believe that I can do good, you know, that I can make different choices and that while I can't justify the, the things I regret, I can hopefully use it in service of something better in the future. And I mean, Endeavor certainly did something pretty great here. And, you, you know, you imagine that if he gets certain things sorted out, it's not impossible, even though it's hard to imagine, him having a, a good relationship with his family. Although, of course, that's up to them as well, right? That's up to the, the kids and his wife. You never know. I mean, things can change. People can change. Time is a powerful thing. Also, I got to say that Endeavor really shut me up. Like, he really shut me up. Here I am talking about how there can't be another All Might. Like, you got to do things your own way. And there is some truth to that in the way it played out, I think. Like, He's not exactly All Might. He's definitely not All Might's demeanor, but I mean, he's definitely a symbol. He definitely just became someone people look up to and someone who gives others a feeling of safety. There's also this interesting thing of Endeavor sort of working out some of his major character dilemmas through the fight. Like there are obvious metaphors here of overheating, which is kind of an awesome thing in itself, just because that is what he is, right? He is obsessive and unbelievably ambitious to a fault. And that ends up being just a terrible, destructive thing. Like, I don't know, 95% of the time for Endeavor, it's at least in his personal life, except for the fact that he also happens to be a hero and it's like the best place to apply that. In another great example of like weaknesses being able to be strengths if applied to the right things. And I think what was sort of a turning point narratively in this episode is that he was able to connect it, I guess, largely due to the soul searching he's been doing recently to better things than just like the self serving goals of perhaps getting attention or using this as a vehicle to ignore his own weaknesses or shortcomings because there's no amount of fame or status that will cure certain like fundamental psychological or internal issues and one thing I would like to read into this episode is that it was those things that were holding him back and by processing and understanding his own weaknesses and his own faults and being able to burn them away that stripped away some of the self-doubt and gave him the conviction that he needed to pull that last victory out of his hat in a very unselfish way I mean it, it did seem like he was going to sacrifice himself there and I mean, that was certainly a risk. And then it just makes it all the cooler that he ends up standing up through the flames while everyone's watching. So he managed to accomplish so many things at the same time, like a character journey and his original goal. You know what I mean? Like it's sort of an amazing moment for him. He did just become a symbol and also it, it feels like he earned it. It doesn't feel like he cheated his way there. He had to actually sort of do the reflection that I think is an integral part of it, you know, the value part of it. And then if that wasn't enough, you get this really cool, like, Hawks fandom for Endeavor. It all happens so quick, it's sort of remarkable how clearly it comes through that Hawks has admiration for Endeavor, and it makes it all the sweeter, even though it all happens all at once, that he's then able to provide backup. You know, there's something beautiful about someone who admires someone else being able to be useful to that person. And then, of course, it's visually stunning. I mean, the attention they put into Endeavor's power really makes him feel like, uh, this is what a top hero's powers should look like, right? Like, this is what perhaps fully realized powers should be and makes the UA training seem more important and also sort of sets a, a, an interesting ceiling that I, you know, I hadn't really imagined before. In many ways, I think even more interesting than All Might at full power, although we haven't really seen that much of it. So yeah, that was a lot. I would like to watch the end credits one more, one more time for good measure. The kids, All Might winning competition. Oh, I think we just got introduced to her, right? She's one of the top 10 heroes. President Mike and Aizawa eating noodles in the back. Still not exactly sure what the bottom picture is, but okay. Everyone very pensive. And then a hugging his pillow. It's the most physical contact he'll get in a while. Oh, is that is that gentle? It's gentle. It's gentle, isn't it? It's gentle. Hey, look at him. Oh, and that's that's La Brava. That's La Brava and her crush. Endeavor and family, brother and sister, and that's Hawks in his training. Being trained by who exactly? Beautiful. All right, I think I got like 90% of it. It took me a while, but <laughs> after credit scene, I really can't believe season four is over. It's so insane.
What is this, Deco on the Moon? Some unfamiliar faces. You're the ninth. The ninth. One for all, user? Would that actually happen in some capacity? What the heck? Well, I have no idea what that meant. <laughs> no idea at all. So the Deco goes to space? That's cool. So that was a spectacular end to what I would say was a really spectacular season. It's really tough to evaluate and compare season to season just because you gotta be careful of recency bias, right? Like I just finished season four and I'm, I'm like left with the afterglow. But I guess the way I'll put it is what more could you ask for? You know what I mean? Like splitting the season up into two arcs, you get this amazing overhaul arc with the introduction of Mirio, who is easily one of my favorite characters. A departure in tone, I'd say, for a lot of it. It's very tense, very gritty. There's more tragedy in it than usual, but really compelling, very thrilling. Deku sort of rounding out his vision of himself as a hero a little bit in some interesting ways. And of course, that just incredible, incredible overhaul fight sequence. Overall, himself being a somewhat confusing villain, I'd say, or somewhat flawed in some ways, but still ending up being very threatening, formidable enough, while also managing to be somewhat tragic in the end. And also that all being a vehicle for like Shigaraki to be awesome and continuing the development of him and the League of Villains and their unfortunate name as they continue to grow as the heroes are growing. And then you get what in many ways is a total opposite, but also just spectacular with the musical fest festival or the, the culture festival or whatever. Just being peak slice of life My Hero Academia, if that makes sense. It's just all the kids being great kids in a way that is riveting to watch with the payoff of Eri actually having a good time. As simple as that is, it just ended up being really profound and one of my favorite moments in the show so far. And also, even though I get the sense that he's somewhat controversial or there are mixed feelings about him, I actually really love Gentle. I resonated with his backstory quite a bit. It's interesting having a Yaptuber villain and I feel like they captured that so well. Like there's something so magical about the way they portrayed his motivation and his frustration. And I also like the way they resolved his arc. And I also think it did something great for Deku. So, you know, this show does a great job of giving you all these elements and being able to mix it up in so many different ways without things feeling wasted and just giving you this feeling like you've gotten something good, like you've gotten something real and valuable. At least that's how I feel when I come away from these episodes, especially at like midpoints and ends of season. And that's part of what makes it so sad that season four is over. I'm really enjoying it and I sort of am sad to be going into the final available season, but also of course excited because I'm sure it'll be amazing if you know, the trajectory of the show is any indication. So yeah, that's it for season four. Thank you all for watching and following this reaction series. This is the longest I've done one show, I think, at this point. We're how many episodes in? Like 80? Something like that? I think the record before that was 63. 64. It's just been a ton of fun and it wouldn't be anywhere near as fun if I was just watching the show on my own. So thank you to all of you as always for just being, you know, the, the great and awesome and supportive people that you are. Special thank you to my patrons for making these videos possible, for keeping the lights on and also for putting up with my intense craziness as I can't sit still in one place for more than five seconds and cause all sorts of needless interruptions in the scheduling. But I couldn't make these videos without your support. So just a huge thank you for making this possible. And again, just for being amazing people always consistently to my utter disbelief that people could be this great. Also, a shout out to those who joined the, the top tier on Patreon. Emin Reed, Brooklyn Doreen, Coconut Gang, Azuma, Damian Gillespie, and Kaoru Takaida. Thank you to you. Thank you to all my patrons. Thank you again to everyone for watching. Love you guys always, and I will see you very soon for the beginning of season five and what I'm sure will be another We Live in a Hero Society <laughs> recap. Mm -hmm.